to a period of time when we can uh, we can see the economy of this uh, province and of this constituency recover. I think we're well on our way towards that, and I believe this announcement is going to uh, point us in a direction where we can uh, look to uh, that Alberta recovery and do so in a fashion that uh, respects the economy and the environment. I want to uh, thank uh, Minister Nixon and uh, the Premier for coming out today. And the Premier, why don't you come and make your announcement? Well, thank you very much, uh, MLA Mark Smith, for welcoming us here to the beautiful riding of Drayton Valley, Devon. And out here, thank you very much to Capital Power for welcoming us to the uh, Genesee Power Station, which is, helps literally to keep the lights on in Edmonton and, and much of the region here. Uh, thank you, Mark, for you being a strong voice for jobs in the economy, but also uh, diversification and research uh, in important new areas of green technology. Uh, I am really excited to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here alongside Capital Power, Emissions Reduction Alberta, CP Rail, Canadian Natural Resources Limited, Calgary Aggregate Recycling, uh, MLA Smith, and we'll be joined in a moment by uh, Minister of Environment and Parks, Jason Nixon. Last September, Alberta's government announced that we would invest the $750 million collected from our technology innovation and emissions reduction program into new technologies to lower emissions and create jobs in the process. This was announced as part of Alberta's recovery plan, a bold plan to create jobs and diversify our economy, in part by doubling down on Alberta's role in a responsible energy future. I'm pleased to say that three quarters of a billion dollars of investment is being leveraged to access billions more in private investments for projects that are expected to create about 9,000 direct jobs while significantly lowering Alberta's greenhouse gas emissions. And part of that investment went towards Emissions Reduction Alberta's Shovel Ready Challenge. One year ago tomorrow, the Shovel Ready Challenge was issued to Alberta companies municipalities and industry associations that were ready to implement new emissions reducing technologies. Each successful applicant was eligible for up to $15 million in funding from Emissions Reduction Alberta through the TIER program to help bring their technological achievements to life. Today I am announcing that 16 emissions reducing projects will receive $176 million in funding for this challenge. That's $126 million from Alberta's tier fund and another $50 million from the Federal Low Carbon Economy Leadership Fund. Together, these projects, many of which are already underway, will inject $2 billion into Alberta's economy and eliminate almost 7 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. That's equivalent to eliminating emissions from the electricity used by a million homes. These projects are ready to start very soon, and this batch of funding will support about 5,600 jobs for Alberta's construction workers, operations managers, electricians, truck drivers, engineers, tradespeople, and many more. This funding is getting in installers, inspectors, quality quality control technicians and site supervisors back to work sooner rather than later. Large operations across nearly every sector in Alberta are benefiting from this funding, including oil and gas and uh, chemicals and fertilizers, cement and concrete, forestry and agriculture, electricity and manufacturing. Uh, Minister Nixon will provide uh, more details in a minute, but let me just say that our tier program is something that we ran on the last campaign, which was to improve something Alberta's been doing since 2007, which is applying a levy on major industrial greenhouse gas emissions to use that money to reinvest in emissions reducing technology because we believe the path forward to address the climate challenge is not punishing people for living normal lives, but rather investing in technology that can make a huge difference. 
Alberta's TIER program continues to show this province's national and global leadership in groundbreaking technological advances that lower emissions to fight climate change while at the same time creating jobs and diversifying our economy. Alberta is quickly becoming a hub for these projects, like the historical investment from Dow Chemicals announced last month that will use carbon capture for the world's first zero emission ethylene derivatives complex on the face of the earth. What we believe when it goes to fi final investment decision will likely be the largest investment in the Alberta economy in well over a decade. Uh, I'll, and I want to mention the words, indeed, of, of Dow Global CEO Jim Fitterling as he stood on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to announce this huge investment. He said last week, quotes, you have to have the policies that support l moving to low carbon emissions, and that's what we're doing up in Alberta, unquote. Well, Mr. Fitterling is right. That's exactly what we're doing up here in Alberta, and we continue to do so. We're on track here today. Now, back in the summer, I took part in announcing Air Products' billion-dollar hydrogen facility in Edmonton, the first of its kind in Canada to produce net-zero hydrogen from natural gas, and one of many great projects being funded by this shovel-ready project, this sh shovel-ready challenge, I should say. The companies using this funding are showing incredible leadership on economic diversification and recovery, job creation, and reducing emissions through technology. One of the projects is Capital Power's own innovative carbon nanotube technology, which transforms carbon dioxide and prevents emissions from entering the atmosphere. And actually, it was MLA Mark Smith who was the first guy to tell me about this nanotube technology about two or three years ago. Nanotube technology being developed here has the potential to transform entire industries like electrical engineering by replacing copper. Brian will have more to share about this exciting tech in a few minutes. Together, we see the results of our homegrown, made in Alberta approach to lowering carbon emissions. Practical innovations that protect the environment in tangible and measurable ways. Technology, not taxes. We aren't talking about reducing emissions. We aren't, I should say, we aren't just talking about reducing emissions. We are acting to actually reduce emissions, and that's what matters. Uh, we, we're making investments that will actually reduce emissions right here at home and right now. We were the first jurisdiction in North America to establish a levy on industrial carbon emissions way back in 2007. We were the first regional government in North America to set a methane's emission target combined with methane technology that'll cut one and a half million tons right away as part of the province's goal of reducing methane emissions from upstream oil and gas by 45 percent from 2014 levels to uh, 2025. And the market is driving a transition from coal-fired electricity uh, to gas but by 2023, just two years from now. Combined with our hydrogen roadmap that we'll actually be releasing tomorrow, uh, our petrochemical incentive program, Alberta's natural gas strategy, and our long-standing support for carbon capture and storage, with all of these and other policies, we're attracting investment and job creators back to Alberta. Last summer, we launched Alberta's recovery plan to grow our economy in the face of the global COVID recession and the collapse in energy prices. But today, Alberta's economy is on the rebound in a big way. Most economists project that we are leading the country in growth this year and will do so again next year. And we've seen the creation of nearly 60,000 net new jobs in the past three months. This is great news and it's no surprise. Alberta is home to some of the most enterprising entrepreneurs in the world who recognize that innovation, the environment, and economic prosperity go hand in hand. This is the approach we need to make a real difference. And as we look forward to the years ahead, I'm excited that with Alberta's recovery plan and with investments like the one I'm announcing today, that we are breathing new life into this economy and creating new opportunities for every Albertan.
So congratulations to the 17 successful funding recipients, including uh, the three or four represented here today. I look forward to seeing your projects take shape in the weeks and months to come. Thank you again for having me this morning, uh, for Brian, and uh, with that, we'll hear from our guests. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Premier. If I could please ask Steve McDonald, the CEO of Emissions Reduction Alberta, to step forward. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Premier Kenny and MLA Smith for being part of today's announcement. Transferring our, transforming our industries for success in a low carbon future is both exciting and complex. It takes supportive policy frameworks, significant investments, and strong leadership. Thank you for putting these pieces in place. The path to reducing emissions is paved with technology and innovation. Provincial and federal funding unlocks the private investments we need to stimulate the economy now and support the lower, lower emissions industries of the future. For 12 years, ERA has been helping to create that future. ERA was purpose-built by the province to both identify and fund the most promising technologies to reduce emissions, strengthen our economy, and create job growth. We do this by investing a portion of the carbon levy paid by large final emitters. With today's announcement, ERA has now committed $821 million toward 221 projects, unlocking $6.6 billion in public and private investment. Our portfolio of projects can result in cumulative GHG reductions of over 42 million tonnes by 2030. Our projects are putting Alberta at the heart of Canada's living lab for next wave technologies. Today we are adding 16 shovel-ready projects to ERA's portfolio. These projects will lead to substantial GHG reductions and create thousands of jobs. They include large industries, SMEs, municipalities and Indigenous supported initiatives. They achieve near-term reductions by advancing the solutions that exist today, including resource extraction technologies, renewables, and energy efficiency. And they accelerate the scale-up and de-risking of emergent technologies like CCUS and hydrogen, technologies that have enormous global potential. Just imagine if the technologies from the projects announced today are adopted around the world by other companies and countries. Imagine zero emission public transit in every community or using carbon capture to create value-added products that help build the world's new circular economy. I encourage everyone to visit our website, eralberta.ca, to learn more about our portfolio projects and today's Shovel Ready Challenge winners. Thank you again to Premier Kenny and Minister Nixon for your leadership and commitment to put in place all the conditions for success. Thank you, Brian and Capital Power, for hosting us and your corporate commitment to advancing clean technologies. I'd also like to acknowledge the federal government, specifically the Low Carbon Economy Leadership Fund, for its support. And thank you to all the funding recipients for your ongoing commitment to innovation. Later this week, I'll be traveling to Glasgow to participate in COP26, the climate change conversations. Today's, today's announcement is another piece of Alberta's compelling narrative on how we are closing the gap between rhetoric and reality. I'd like to now turn the podium over to Brian, President and CEO of Capital Power. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, and welcome to all our guests, Premier Kenny, Minister Nixon, Steve McDonald, to all at the Genesee Operating Station. This facility has a long history in Alberta. Since 1989, Genesee has reliably powered not only the daily lives of Albertans, but supported the innovation and industries at the heart of our province. At Capital Power, we're working to transform our energy system to support a carbon neutral future. 
Genesee is our hub for innovation and the commercial application of new technologies driving this change. Capital Power is proud to receive $15 million from the ERA's Shovel Ready Challenge for our Genesee Carbon Conversion Center. This facility is set to be the world's largest commercial scale production facility of carbon nanotubes and will utilize C2CNT technology, a game changing solution to transform carbon dioxide emissions into a useful product. This funding demonstrates Alberta's commitment to innovation and emissions reduction and reaffirms our impact as a world leader in energy transformation. We're excited to develop this centre and demonstrate how emissions from a power generation facility like Genesee can not only be captured but utilised in an innovative way such that the end product helps avoid downstream emissions in our economy. Our carbon nanotubes are a conductive high value product that can be used as an additive to substantially increase the strength of materials such as concrete, steel, epoxy and aluminum. The use of these carbon nanotubes in downstream industrial processes reduces the amount of inputs and energy required and drives further reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. This is just part of the innovation we're committed to deploying at Genesee. We've commenced a billion dollar transformational investment at Genesee that will result in us being off coal in 2023. This project will utilize state-of-the-art natural gas combined cycle technology, reducing our emissions by roughly 3.4 million tons a year. We're also advancing plans for the Genesee Carbon Capture and Storage Project. This project would replace an additional investment of $1.6 to $2 billion at this site. It would be operational potentially in late 2026 and would capture roughly 3 million tons of emissions per year. Alberta is home to us. Capital Power has been the single largest investor in new generation capacity in Alberta over the last 20 years. The Genesee Carbon Conversion Centre, the transformation of the Genesee units and our Genesee CCS project reflect our continued commitment to Alberta and to being a leader in the carbon neutral transformation that's taking place in Alberta. I would like now to invite Dr. Kyle Mulligan, Chief Engineer, Railway Technology of Canadian Pacific uh, Railway to speak. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Mr. Smith, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Vaslow, and honoured guests. I'd like to start by thanking the ERA for their substantial financial support in our hydrogen locomotive program. CP aims to build the first line haul locomotive that's hydrogen powered in North America. With the financial support of the ERA, we are able to take our first prototype to three locomotives. In addition to the three locomotives, we are going to be building hydrogen production facilities and fueling stations located in our terminals in Edmonton and Calgary. To build a line haul locomotive, you can replace the diesel generator using new technology like hydrogen fuel cells and batteries. These technologies will be used to power the already electric traction motors of our locomotives. I'm proud to say that with the additional funding we've been able to establish a center of excellence in hydrogen and freight rail systems right here in Alberta. We believe that the knowledge that we're going to gather will be critical for not only us but the entire North American freight rail industry which yields the potential of converting 30,000 plus locomotives to decarbonize this industry. With that, I'd like to introduce Travis Powell, President of Calgary Aggregate Recycling. Thank you.
Hello. We would like to thank the Government of Alberta and Emissions Reduction Alberta for the opportunity to construct Canada's first soil reuse facility. This facility is a stepping stone for greater emission reductions as Alberta adopts this technology to divert valuable resources from landfill. Calgary Aggregate Recycling has operated for 30 years and up until recently has been focused on recycling concrete and asphalt from the City of Calgary's construction activities. Calgary Aggregate Recycling has diverted over 250,000 tonnes of debris from landfill or illegal dumping operations annually. The soil reuse facility will exist within our current location and will, and will recycle contaminated mixed soils that are unsuitable for the use in new construction, leading to significant waste, uh, sorry, significant waste reduction, greenhouse gas emission reductions, economic recovery, and long-term sustainability. This process will reduce the distances and volumes of materials that must be exported for disposal, while also reducing the need for importing new products into Calgary. This reduction of heavy traffic will reduce emissions by 67% and extend the usable life of landfills and aggregate resources in the greater Calgary area. Without programs such as the ERA and the forward thinking of our provincial government, our goal for a more sustainable future would not be possible. We look forward to the uh, future expansion of this facility throughout our province and to put Alberta on the leading edge of sustainable construction. Thank you. Thanks so much, Travis. I'd now ask the Honourable Jason Nixon, Alberta's Minister of Environment and Parks, to take the podium. Thank you. It's windy today. Well, thank you, first of all, thank you, Premier, for being here today. Thank you, Brian, and, and the rest of the team from Capital Power for having us out today. It's really exciting to be here this morning celebrating more than a dozen shovel-ready projects that will cut emissions, create jobs, and diversify Alberta's economy. Alberta has both the regulatory framework and innovative ecosystem to continue moving forward on significant emission reduction initiatives in the sector. And as evidenced by these Made in Alberta projects and many more down the road, the industry is stepping up to this challenge with its own deliberate targets and concrete projects to get on the path to achieving them. As the Premier discussed, up to $176 million in provincial and federal funding uh, is supporting the Shovel Ready Challenge. The funding is delivered by Emissions Reductions Alberta, a key partner in Alberta's work to balance the needs of the environment and the economy. As the Premier said, these projects will support 5,600 jobs and eject $2 billion in Alberta's economy and cut nearly 7 million tons of emissions by 2030. That's the same as cutting emissions from electricity used in 4.5 million homes. Funding to the ERA is supporting everything from lower carbon industrial processes to cleaner oil and gas to low emitting electricity. And now I'd like to highlight a few of these great projects. In addition to the exciting technology that will soon be underway here at the Genesee facility, there are also fantastic projects on the horizon for companies like CNRL, Canadian Pacific Railway and Calgary Aggregate Recycling. CNRL is using the Shovel Ready funding to support its pit extraction process, which puts bitumen extraction in the middle of the mine, mine pit. This supports dry, stackable tailings that can support immediate reclamation, therefore stopping the creation of problematic tailing ponds. Also, bitumen is usually extracted well outside the mine pit at a plant, but this new approach will reduce the amount of energy needed to pump material, reduce the need for haul trucks, and will decrease the length of pipelines. This exciting new innovation also applies to all mineable oil sands operations and can be adopted to some worldwide mining operations. Shovel Ready funding is also supporting Canada Pacific Railway's hydrogen locomotive program. This includes three brand new rail transportation vehicles that will be powered by low carbon hydrogen. These vehicles are designed to do the same work as a normal locomotive, but no emissions will be produced other than water vapor. This is an incredible project. It will show the potential for nearly emission-free rail transportation, which could change the transportation industry as we know it, and it would start right here in Alberta. We also have Calgary Aggregate Recycling, an Indigenous-owned company 
that specializes in concrete, asphalt, and recycling. This company is using funds to build a soil reuse facility. It's very windy today. Contaminated soil from construction sites will be processed into stone and sand products. This turns waste that would normally go to landfill into valuable products and the facility's central Calgary location reduces emissions by shortening the distance needed to transport to waste disposal. By weight contamination, soil, in Alberta's, soil is Alberta's largest hazardous waste stream with an estimated 3 million tons of contaminated so soil landfilled each year in Alberta. This facility will be the first of its kind in Canada and the second of its kind in North America. A true turnkey operation that puts Alberta at the front line of sustainable construction. Folks, it's been more than a year since Alberta's government announced $750 million for the tier fund was to be allocated to a range of programs that would reduce emissions, boost the economy, and most importantly, get Albertans back to work. It's been a real pleasure for us to see the investments from the tier fund continue to support Alberta's economic recovery. And I'm happy to be here today celebrating the latest game-changing technologies, and I'm looking forward to the next batch. Thank you very much. I think, Harris, we're going to take some questions. Uh, yes, sir, Minister. Uh, we will go to the one journalist who's braving the climate uh, with us outside today, Tom Vernon with Global News. Go right ahead. Some trees would look nice right there. Um, yes. This one's for the Premier. Uh, the Prime Minister announced this morning the intention of capping oil and gas emissions in the economy. There, there had been talk in Alberta of doing the same 100 uh, megaton cap on the oil sands previously. Um, your reaction to this announcement, will you take part in conversations in developing this policy? Either minister, yes. Thanks, Tom. And thanks for braving the, uh, the weather out here. So Alberta's commitment is to real action to reduce emissions. That's what we're demonstrating here today. Uh, and we'll continue to. I think it's important to, you know, I said to the Prime Minister the day after I was elected that we'd be willing to get into a discussion with the Government of Canada about uh, energy and the environment, about how to reduce emissions while ensuring a future for Canada's largest industry, an industry that employs 800,000 people. And at that time, I said we would be certainly willing to talk about the uh, 100 megaton cap, the, 100, the cap on, on uh, oil sands emissions. Um, and uh, we've never really received a response uh, to that inquiry. I, I think it's important to put this in context. Uh, Alberta is responsible for about 0.58% of global greenhouse gas emissions, and oil and gas production in this province is responsible for half of that. So uh, Alberta's oil and gas industry is responsible for uh, less than one-third of 1% 1 of global greenhouse gas emissions. Now. One third of one percent isn't nothing, and we have to, to get that number down. That's what we're committed to doing. The single most important way the Prime Minister could help us would be putting real resources behind a huge expansion of Alberta's carbon capture and storage technology. Alberta was a global leader on this going back 10, 12 years ago. We appreciate that the federal budget uh, earlier this year included a commitment to uh, support for uh, carbon capture and sequestration, but we still have not seen the details. So I guess, Tom, what I would say is we can all give speeches about this stuff, but what matters is action. And we think we could take um, an enormous amount of CO2 out of the environment uh, through expand, we think as much as uh, 190,000 megatons or more, uh, up to 640,000 megatons could be reduced by Alberta oil and gas emissions if we had suitable CCUS uh, infrastructure. So our, we'd like to work with the feds on concrete things like that. Instead of just setting targets, targets that Canada has consistently missed, let's actually invest in the technology like CCS. Do you have a follow-up today, Tom? Yeah, it, it's, it's on another issue. I mean, this one might be for the minister, but it might be for you, Premier. Uh, the carbon tax, uh, we currently have the federal carbon tax here. Where are we at in designing an Alberta one after the court case? Are we going to be doing that or are we just going to stick with the federal plan? First, first to be clear, we fundamentally disagree with the federal government's approach to pricing carbon. Having said that, the Supreme Court ruling is clear. Uh, and as the Premier said then, and I said then, that requires us to take some action on what is in the best interest of Albertans. 
Uh, we're not prepared to announce that today, but what I am prepared to say today is we've been in extensive conversations with the federal government as well as widespread consultation uh, with Albertans as a whole to understand what, what would be the best for our province. And we'll have more to say uh, in the coming days. But what the action that we take will be done to protect the Alberta taxpayer and to make sure, the same as we do for all of our climate policies, uh, that the mechanisms that we use in Alberta will be done to protect everyday Albertans and to protect our industry and make sure that there's a fo path forward for job creators. Thank you, Minister. That concludes our in-person questions today, so we'll hop over to the phones. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? David Staples, Edmonton Journal. Yes, Premier. In, the, in his speech today, uh, Trudeau talked about um, capping emissions today. Uh, Alberta has talked about having a 100 megaton limit in Fort McMurray, um, which is in the future. Is there any change in policy here that you're hearing from the Trudeau government on this, or... What do, you, what do you make of his call for the cap of oil and gas sector emissions today? Well, it, fr frankly, it's hard to know because we have tried to get into a serious dialogue with the federal government about this and related issues for over two years. And we they really don't seem to be so far willing to sit down with us and have a serious conversation. Our message to them is simply this, that they have zero chance. The G G government of Canada has zero chance of achieving its uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction targets without Alberta, specifically without Alberta's oil and gas industry. We need to be partners in this. Uh, let's sit, sit down and, and figure it out together. Uh, instead, we seem to constantly deal with improvised targets ever in, of, of ever increasing ambition from a federal government that's never come close to meeting its targets. I think it's time for, yes, ambition, but also real, concrete, uh, pro progress. It's not enough just to throw out big numbers uh, and give at speeches at, at international conferences. Where the difference is going to be made is in the industrial application of technologies like we're announcing today and particularly things like a massive upscaling of carbon capture utilization and storage technology. So we would love to sit down and talk to them about that. Um, for our part, Alberta Minister Nixon will be releasing Alberta's uh, updated climate policy in the next few weeks uh, and in that you will see that we are being very ambitious but also realistic about what can be achieved uh, through uh, investments in technology like today's. And do you have a follow-up today David? Yes, uh, the new uh, climate minister Stephen Gibo has been campaigning against nuclear energy for all of his career as an environmentalist for 25 years, 30 years. He staged numerous events against nuclear energy, spoken out against it repeatedly, want, wants Canada to get rid of nuclear energy, which has been identified by Alberta and other provinces through the small modular reactor program as a, as a great way to combat climate change. What do you think of Mr. Gibo's long-term opposition to nuclear power, and how might that impact um, Canada's efforts to uh, cut emissions. I think it highlights the gross hypocrisy of the radical green left who claim that the there is a climate emergency but oppose the single technology which could most dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions and that is nuclear power. Uh, it is ridiculous when you see uh, governments around the world preaching uh, climate uh, purity like Germany that have shut down their nuclear plants to reopen coal plants. Uh, this is the hypocrisy of uh, Mr. Gibo and many others. And uh, so, you know, Alberta has never had it, it, traditionally the, the uh, population scale uh, and we've had abundance of other forms of energy, so we never did uh, traditional 1970s style nuclear plants here. But we are keenly interested in the, uh, pa the prospect of small modular reactors for industrial and, and local applications. And we want to be leaders on that front. Let me point out though that Mr. Gibo and, and like and many of his fellow travelers aren't just opposed to uh, proven technologies that can radically reduce GHG emissions like nuclear. They also generally oppose all of the uh, green technologies that can help us to reduce emissions uh, right now, technologies like hydrogen, 
so-called blue hydrogen. Technologies like carbon capture, utilization and storage. Uh, technologies uh, like, well, uh, policies like exporting liquefied natural gas. We think that Mr. Gibo and Mr. Trudeau should be in Glasgow right now calling on their uh, fellow uh, governments around the world to give Canada credit under Article 5 of the Paris Agreement for helping to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions through any incremental exports of liquefied natural gas. By getting more natural Canadian natural gas to global markets, we can uh, reduce uh, cold-fired electricity in Asia and elsewhere. Th that's the kind of thing that represents real progress on the climate. Unfortunately, what we have heard in the past from people, Mr. Gibo and others like him is opposition to all of those things, nuclear, hydrogen, uh, CCUS, and liquefied natural gas. Um, their uh, uh, approach seems to be, well, it's totally unrealistic. And, and, and their approach, if they were to actually achieve their targets without using these transition technologies, would be devastating uh, to the entire global economy. Thank you. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Emma Greeny, Global Mail. Yeah, g'day, Premier. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I want to follow up on Tom's question. Um, this idea of working with the federal government on greenhouse gas emission reductions, um, what exactly does that cooperation look like? What do the conversations look like between your government and the federal government? Like, are you going to take part in the Net Zero Advisory Board? Or, or what? Can you give some tangible examples there, please? Sure. I spoke to the Prime Minister uh, about 12 hours after our election in, in April of 2019 and said, uh, we need to sit down and, and have a big picture uh, discussion about all of these issues, the uh, 100 megaton cap on the oil sands, uh, major emitters levy equivalency on that and methane. I will say that we have had, uh, Emma, some um, periodic progress with the federal government. For example, uh, Minister Nixon worked very hard to secure equivalency agreements on Alberta's methane regulations. Uh, and, and of course, we did secure an equivalency agreement on the tier levy. Uh, but there is so much more, and we just feel often dealing with Ottawa that they, they are dealing with these on uh, issues as, as one-offs rather than as part of a wider strategy. And we'd be happy to get into a broader conversation with them about that. I'll invite Minister Nixon, to, because he's involved in most of these discussions, to complement that. Just, Emma, just building on what the, the Premier said, we've been in constant contact with the federal government along the way for the last two years. Uh, I will remind you, Emma, that one of the first things we did after the, not this federal election, but the federal election before, was the Premier put uh, the energy minister and myself and a few other key ministers on these files on an airplane. We immediately went to Ottawa. At that time, I met with Minister Wilkinson, and we started uh, many a, a dialogue that would go on for a long period of time that ended up with, as the Premier said, methane methane equivalency, equivalencies around tier, and we continue to have that dialogue both at the bureaucracy level and at the political level. The problem though is that the federal government continues to be focused on targets uh, that they have not achieved once and not on concrete action. And if the federal government wants to set these ambitious targets, they need to invest And in the very first thing they need to do, and this message is being delivered at all levels of our government to the federal government. The very first thing they need to do is support us with the $32 billion investment in carbon capture, utilization, and storage in our province uh, to meet our requirements when it comes to the oil sands for that ambition. Uh, the latest uh, projections that I have seen for Mr. Trudeau's uh, ambition and targets, that's not counting the new ones that he seems to be setting today, is that it's going to cost over $200 billion to be able to make sure that we can meet that ambition. Uh, at this point, from the perspective of Alberta, we continue to invest significantly in addressing climate change in our province, and it's time for the federal government to stop setting targets to show up and actually invest if they want to meet those ambitions. If not, this just continues to be the federal government setting targets that clearly they have no intention of ever meeting. Thank you, Minister Nixon. Emma, did you have a follow-up today? Yes, I actually did. Okay, so you're talking there about investment. Um, obviously, the federal government is developing a carbon capture uh, tax credit right now. I mean, 50 million bucks of what you're announcing today is also coming from the federal government. 
So when it comes to those investments from, from the federal government, I'm, I'm just curious how you see them targeted specifically towards oil and gas. I mean, you're already talking about carbon capture, and that's going to be needed if you're talking about emissions reduction. But what else can they bring when it comes to specifically oil and gas emissions reductions? Well, I what think, else can actually help here? Th- thanks for the good question, uh, Emma. I, I think the answer is really being provided by the uh, pathways coalition of the major oil sands producers uh, who collectively represent 90 percent of oil sands production and they have put forward a long-term strategy collectively to get to net zero emissions for the Canadian oil sands uh, by 2050 through the application of numerous technologies but the single biggest piece would be through carbon capture utilization storage Uh, they roughly estimate that half of the progress to achieving net zero for the oil sands would be through a massive upscaling of CCUS Um, and that's where the 32 billion dollar figure comes from Um, doing that would help us to reduce emissions by uh, something uh, in the range of a half a million megatons and that's a that's a de- that's a game changer um, the United States you know Canada Alberta started out ahead of the game on CCUS about 12 years ago we were laughed at and ridiculed for doing it but the technology is now proven the costs have come down by about 50 percent per ton sequestered um, and and uh, there of course new technologies coming on board all the time um, and and the point is that the in the mean in the interval the united states came in with the 45q uh tax incentive for ccus which has led to uh, the construction of i think a dozen major ccus projects in the united states so we've been falling behind and so what we're calling on the feds to do is to turn their their uh their budget commitment into a uh a refundable tax credit that is as generous as the American 45Q to make it refundable, to make it stackable, uh, and to ensure that uh, that it can also apply to uh, enhanced oil recovery so we can get uh, potentially net zero oil extraction from the conventional basin. So those are some of the specifics. I mean, there are other technologies, of course, that uh, that they're pursuing, and we do appreciate. I want to be clear. I don't want to sound churlish. We appreciate um, co-investments like the one that we are announcing today, and these are important. They are progress. But if we want to really take this to another level, we're going to have to, to see larger larger investments. Okay, thank you, Premier. In uh, in light of cold wind and chilly fingers, we have time for about three more questions today. I know there's a couple of folks still waiting online, and if we don't get a chance to answer your question, please don't hesitate to send an email to either myself or Paul Hamnett, Minister Nixon's press secretary. Uh, with that, operator, can you please put through our next caller? Chris Barco, Calgary Herald. Hi, this is a question for the Premier. Premier, just going back to the announcement today by the Prime Minister on the details to put in place a cap on emissions from the oil and gas sector. Do you have an issue with the cap? Do you view it as some sort of risk to the industry or to the province? Uh, We need to know what the details are. Um, The answer is uh, not necessarily. It depends on what the cap is. And uh, as I said, we are willing to discuss with them the uh, propo- the earlier proposed 100 megaton cap. Um, they've never come back to us uh, to discuss that. Uh, I don't know why they would make an announcement like this without consulting with the province that actually owns the, uh, mo- the, the overwhelming majority of Canada's oil and gas reserves. Um, Alberta uh, has one th- uh, has the, is the third largest reserve of proven and probable oil, oil reserves on the face of the earth. It represents the largest job creating industry in Canada. So it's peculiar that they wouldn't talk to us before making a statement like that. Um, I mean, uh, what I can tell you, Chris, is that we will vigorously defend the economic interests of Alberta, including the right to develop our own natural resources and to do so in a responsible way while also seeking significantly to reduce carbon emissions. That is our commitment. We're demonstrating that with today's investment and other policies. But um, if, if in fact what this announcement about to, is about today is, is trying to, uh, quotes, leave it in the ground, then of course we would fight that with every tool at our disposal. I'll remind you 
The Prime Minister at a town hall in Peterborough about four years ago um, talked about phasing out the oil sands and there was a understandably massive and negative public reaction. He quickly walked that back and apologized for that language. So I, I hope that uh, the, the federal government understands that if, if, they, uh, if they're trying to fundamentally limit the development of Canadian resources, they're just handing the global energy market over to places like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela and Putin's Russia. That would be bad for the environment and bad for the world. And Chris, do you have a follow-up today? Yeah, Premier, just to follow up on that that line of, of I guess, of, uh, of logic, do you believe that they have the legal authority to put a cap in place, and, and particularly given the ruling that came out of the Supreme Court of Canada regarding the carbon tax? Well, that's one of the issues being considered in the uh, our judicial reference to the Alberta Appeal Court on uh, the former Bill C-69, the Canada Environmental Assessment Act, what we call the No More Pipelines Law. Uh, Peter Lougheed fought for and won a critical victory to include Section 92A in the 1982 Constitution Act, which recognizes exclusive provincial jurisdiction over the regulation of natural resources. And so uh, we will uh, defend that constitutional right uh, every single day. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please put through our second last caller? Rick Bell, Calgary Sun. Uh, good afternoon, Premier. Um, just following uh, the last question, uh, I'd like to get down to brass tacks. Do you think Prime Minister Trudeau really cares what you think or cares what your government thinks or cares what Albertans think about any commitments, proclamations, declarations he makes in Scotland or in Canada or in anywhere else. Do you really think he, he cares what Alberta thinks about it or you think about it? I don't know the answer to that question, Rick. All I can tell you is that the Prime Minister better be concerned about the Canadian economy and jobs from coast to coast. Uh, tens of billions of dollars that fill his treasury every year come out of Alberta's energy sector. 800,000 Canadians are tied to it through their, for their jobs directly and indirectly. Co manufacturing companies in Ontario and Quebec would go broke if they didn't have orders from the Alberta energy sector. So if he cares about the economy and jobs as he claimed to in this recent election, then he will work with us to ensure a future for Canada's largest industry. Thanks, Premier. Rick, do you have a follow-up today? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, well, uh, I applaud you for your optimism, Premier, but what happens if that does not occur? And yet again, um, perhaps he is not listening to Albertans or factoring in Alberta, um, which is a movie probably made last week with the appointment of an environment minister who's nicknamed the Green Jesus of Montreal. <laughs> so what happens if if you don't feel he has met that standard of, of consulting with Alberta and working with Alberta, what, what can be done or what kind of a stand will you take if that happens? Well, we're already taking that stand in the Alberta Court of Appeal with our judicial reference on his uh, invasion of our constitutional uh, jurisdiction in Bill C-69. So uh, we've, we've, that card has been played. Um, we made a statement as a province that we want a fair deal in the Federation with a 62% vote on the equalization vote referendum a couple of weeks ago. And we, as, I, as you know, we continue to work towards other ways that we can strengthen this province. As I've said many times, uh, uh, you know, Alberta should have the same rights in this country that Quebec has, and we're prepared to exercise all of those rights if we need to, to strengthen this province. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Rick, at the end of the day, it's up to Canadian voters whether or not they want policies that uh, create jobs and growth or do they want policies that shrink our economy and kill jobs. And I believe that the vast, just like the vast majority of Quebecers say they would prefer to use 
Western Canadian oil and gas as opposed to imports. I believe the majority of Canadian voters, when push comes to shove, if they're forced to start paying attention to these trade-offs, I believe they'll side with the economy and jobs. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please connect our last call that we have time for today? Stephanie Rousseau, Radio Canada. Oui, bonjour. Euh, ma question est pour le premier ministre. Donc, aujourd'hui, Justin Trudeau à Glasgow a dit qu'il qu qu avait la volonté, en fait, que le Canada plafonne les émissions de gaz à effet de serre euh, du secteur pétrolier. Quel serait un plafond acceptable pour l'Alberta et quelles sont aussi les demandes pour accepter un tel plafond là, du fédéral? Just to translate for folks watching in English, that was essentially a, a, a reprise of a number of the earlier questions about Mr. Trudeau's commitment, uh, but in French. Um, depuis le début de notre gouvernement, on a essayé de travailler avec le gouvernement fédéral pour trouver un équilibre entre le développement économique de notre industrie pétrolière et la diminution des émissions de gaz à effet de serre. C'est la raison pour laquelle nous, nous faisons l'annonce aujourd'hui, les investissements importants dans la technologie, euh, fondés par euh, l'impôt euh, sur euh, les, les émissions industrielles de gaz à effet de serre. Alors, euh, nous, a, nous disons au fédéral, au M. Trudeau, que si vous voulez atteindre vos objectifs, vos buts en, en ce qui concerne les émissions, il faut travailler avec l'Alberta, il faut travailler avec l'industrie énergétique, euh, avec les investissements importants dans les technologies comme euh, la séquestration de carbone. Alors, euh, nous faisons l'accent, nous mettons l'accent sur le progrès concret et réel avec les investissements dans la technologie, pas les, les nouveaux euh, buts qui, pour un gouvernement fédéral qui n'a jamais euh, réalisé les objectifs à cet égard. Stephanie, do you have a follow-up to wrap things up today? I do. Um, donc, ma deuxième question, aussi en français. Euh, la recherche, le développement, ce que vous annoncez, en fait, aujourd'hui, c'est beaucoup basé sur la recherche, le développement de nouvelles technologies. Euh, c'est bien, mais si ça prend plusieurs années, en fait, à se développer, est-ce que vous trouvez vraiment ça suffisant? Est-ce qu'il ne faudrait pas aussi que l'Alberta en fasse plus pour réduire les émissions de la province? Euh, vous blâmez beaucoup Ottawa, mais est-ce qu'il ne faudrait pas aussi que la province fasse sa part? Mais nous, nous avons déjà fait les progrès importants. Par exemple, par 2023, il n'y aura aucune uh, utilisation de, de coal dans, les, dans uh, la production de l'électricité en Alberta. On a vu une diminution uh, de um, uh, 45 dans les émissions de méthane. Uh, on, a, on a vécu une diminution de 30 dans l'intensité les, les, les des émissions pour barils de, de bitumène. Alors, dans tous les secteurs, il y a eu des progrès, mais euh, et, 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 plusieurs des, des projets que nous annonçons aujourd'hui seront réalisés dans la prochaine année. C'est le « shovel ready challenge », l'idée et les choses qui sont prêtes de, de, de mettre en, en action euh, et les projets très importants à cet égard. Thanks, Premier. That concludes today's media. Thanks. Authority. And we are freezing out here for all of you.